meant for an adult audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Run. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Coast to coast. Yes, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. What happened to the phone number, Drew? Why am I not giving that out? Well, we're not here. That's right. Yes. We're somewhere else having a much better time than we would have had if we were here. And I, I, in your presence, I, I always enjoy myself, so it, it's going to be hard to be without you. But, uh, Here's the good news. Right. This is the best stuff. And yeah. a lot of people say, what's so good about the best of? Well, you guys are all stoned, and you can't remember the last time we had these guests on the show, even if it was yesterday. <laughs> so let's get the uh, party started with uh, world champion skateboarder Tony Hawk. Next up from Sugar Ray, we'll have the uh, talented and sexy Mark McGrath. Speaking of sexy, Lisa Gibbons will be in here. Drew, I yeah. believe uh, you should kiss her ass for your work on Extra. No, I did kiss her ass, but the fact is uh, you made her uncomfortable and I heard about it. That's right. She'll be taking my hypothetical sex question survey. And then, how can we live without another visit to the Carrot Top? Oh, he is hot, that Carrot Top. And of course, the uh, thought-provoking Everlast. Oh. Tony Hawk is our guest tonight. Tony, uh, you know, is probably uh, the world's greatest skateboarder. Or at least the biggest name in skateboarding. I, I don't know enough about skateboarding to know if he's uh, the best in the world, but I certainly know that he makes the most money, and he's <laughs> the biggest name, and has uh, video games and books, and he uh, pulled last year at the X Games, he did the uh, 920? 30, 900. Nine, just Close nine, enough. 900? Yeah. I was in the lobby with somebody, and... Uh, at the X Games, because I, I, Jimmy and I went out there, my other lover, uh, a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I was talking to someone, and I said, former, I was, I former said, lover. Oh, yeah, Tony's big time after he pulled that uh, 675. And the guy like went, 900! <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, man. I, I should have I won up. Well, they're degrees, so. Right, right. You can only go so far. Right, and. Uh, 720 plus 180. So. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. what, is that a two, is that a two and a half? Two and a half. Yes. Oh, that is nice. And 920 is, is when it goes bad. It, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> is it, is it uh, 10 o'clock is when it goes bad on this show. <laughs> yeah. And is it, has anyone pulled this off yet? I mean, it's been a year, right? Yeah. Um, there's a guy on the East Coast, actually, that's coming really close, and I've heard he's landed it. Are they? So uh, people are gunning for your, for your degree. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of people think that that's this pinnacle of skateboarding, but really it's it's one trick that's actually a, a vert trick so it's more specialized you right. know when you, where you do it on a ramp and some random street skater somewhere probably could care less about doing a 900 so yeah but is that something that you can just it's <clears throat> in your repertoire now or is that something you just, no i've you only did. done it i've only yeah. done about five times yeah. and last i've wrecked myself once, a few times yeah yeah what's that last year was only the one time i think i did it once there and i've done it a few times since then but i've actually gotten hurt a couple times since then as well so I, I did it in my tub once, when I was, uh, <laughs> masturbating, and the towel bar broke. It, it's uh, I don't want to talk about it. Now you didn't, you weren't in the X Games this year, right? I you was just, just doing, doing commentary. commentary. Yeah, good. And I entered the doubles event just for fun. What is the doubles event? It's two guys on the ramp at a, at a time. Oh, like, I see. Synchronized skating. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> rollerball. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I don't know what the viewership uh, is or was uh, for the X Games uh, this year. And uh, I don't know what the attendance was as opposed to three or four years ago. But this seems to be one of the fastest growing sports around. I mean, certainly press wise, there's a hell of a lot more talk and a hell of a lot more hype about it this year. And there was a lot last year. But I, you know, I know this thing's been around for six years. And you weren't hearing that much about it the first couple of years. Yeah, it's it's been growing every year, and uh, and I think skating is is a big part of it. One of the, one of the focuses of it, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's seemed... amazing. I mean, they they really couldn't fit any more people there. There was there was a line three hours long just waiting to get into the venue. All right, in San Francisco, so um, it's and incredible. How what, big did, it is. What, what did the grandstands hold there for? Just like the half pipe event. I don't know. I, I would say at least like five thousand. I would think. Yeah, it just looked, the way from the view. There was a lot of different viewing areas, but there was one main viewing what area. What did you do there, Adam? What I do there? Yeah. Uh, I sat in Andy Dick's trailer and ate peanut butter and jelly but sandwiches. What were we supposed to be doing? 
Oh, uh, they had an opening ceremony uh. with uh, me and Jimmy and uh, no doubt like Andy Dick hosted it and Randy the Macho Man Savage and a uh, an eclectic group, someone from Survivor. And all, not Survivor the show, Survivor the band. The one, you know, <laughs> and it was a bass player from Survivor. He sung, he did Eye of the Tiger. The crowd wasn't too hip on that. A lot of 14, 15 year olds in there didn't know who Survivor actually was. That's what we ought to do. We ought to have a guest from Survivor on this show and get one of the guys who was wearing the beret in the video in uh, 1983. Uh. But, uh, yeah, it was great, and it's a beautiful location, and I, I, I guess they're doing it in Chicago next year, or at least that's what I heard. Um, I heard rumors of Philadelphia. Oh, was it Philadelphia? Whatever it is, I thought, it's not going to be as nice as this. I mean, they hold it, you know, right out on the bay, right mm. next to the bridge. I mean, it's, it's, uh, mm. it's really uh, picturesque, and uh, the motorcycle stuff is really uh, gaining yeah, speed. Incredible. You know, a few years ago, when you thought X Games, you didn't think motorcycles. You thought pretty much, you know, street luge, half pipe, and some rock climbing. But I, I wasn't even, you know, I, well, I, I, I think thought supercross How do they do stuff. street luge? How do they just block off... Uh, Streets? Yeah. This is it's not, that it's windy not downhill not street. Stadium. It's not a, no, it's a windy out. downhill street yeah. with, with hay bales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I just thought this whole thing was in a stadium or something. Jesus Christ, I ran into uh, Lusenstein oh, yeah. over there about 400 times. The uh, Really the world's biggest, uh, most obnoxious street luge guy. He's huge. <laughs> How does it work, by the way, that whenever you go out of town for a couple of days or you go do an event or something like that, there's a guy who's assigned to you, somebody you're going to run into three, four times, probably see him at the airport. Then you'll probably catch him in the hotel lobby. And then that night you'll see him at the party. And then the next day you'll see him at the event. And it's never a hot chick. It's Lusenstein. I ran into Lusenstein uh, in the lobby of the hotel when I was walking in. I ran into Lusenstein in his leathers. When we were driving out of the place, Lusenstein was pulling up into the place, and the goddamn day I left, I was talking to Lusenstein. I actually now, ran into him on the street a couple times <laughs> myself. Yeah, and I didn't run into anyone on the street. Why? There was like tons of babes running around there, and smart, interesting people. I could have had provocative conversation with. But I ran into Lusenstein three hundred times, and I thought, why is that? How does that work? How do you just? How does God just assign you to one guy? Yeah. And it's always and he starts always a big the, scary guy yeah. too. You just starts on the plane, right? Yeah, because you're on the plane. It's not not when you land, right? It's in the plane. So That's you're, right. You're trapped, right? And then right. You, and you find oh, I'm away. Got away. No, nope, six more right. times. Lusenstein. That is the guy I saw 650 times while I was there. Meanwhile, I'm hearing about everyone else being there, and I never see any of them. Just Lusenstein. And Lusenstein is. Uh, He's six four six five. He's, he's got to be uh, two hundred and fifty pounds. He's just a. It took like six cows to make his leathers. <laughs> Lucian Stein. And how did how did he do, Tony? What I think he won from what I heard. Oh, did he win? Yeah. Good. You don't. We don't upset Lucian Stein. <laughs> <laughs> he, he puts he put skateboard trucks on a coffin and just went right down that hill in it. I saw him cruising on a motorized board around the set. Oh, <laughs> illusion style. And like an idiot, Jimmy was calling him uh, illusion, illusion Steen. So I thought it was just some big Jew who was like <laughs> some big German Jew who was into skateboarding. I didn't know it like. Jimmy like yelled at me that no, he made up Lusenstein, you idiot. I didn't even know. I think he patented it actually. Oh, for Christ's sake. He's like a pro wrestler with a skateboard. <laughs> All right. Uh, but a good guy. I don't want to say anything bad about Lusenstein. He'll, he'll crush me. Christine? Yes. You're 18. What's up? Okay. Um, I'm two months pregnant. And ever since I got pregnant, I mean, I just cannot stand the boy I'm pregnant by. I don't know why. I just hate him. I can't stand looking at him. I don't want him around me or nothing. When did this happen? That you became so aversive to I him? I mean, it just, I mean, a couple of days after I got pregnant, it just started getting worse and worse every day. So I just, I don't like him no more. Well, he's your brother. You're going to have to live with him and learn to <laughs> no, cope. No, 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 no. no. How, um, how old is he? 23. Ooh. 23. Anything happened? Did he do anything to make you uh, upset? Not that I know of. I mean, stuff that he does before, that he used to do before I was pregnant. Is it now that you're pregnant, you're expecting a little more from him? No, it's just that stuff that he used to do before, it didn't bother me, and now it does. And it's just a little stupid. Like what? Uh, like, it takes not pulling out. an yeah. hour and a half to take a <laughs> Like, you know, stupid stuff. Like, it takes him an hour and a half to get up and take a shower. I mean, yeah. stupid he's, things like He's going to make a great father. 
And uh, don't the uh, folks over at the uh, mill or the Arby's or wherever he uh, barely works, don't they miss him when it takes him an hour and a half to get out of bed? <laughs> no. No. I mean, um... <laughs> and some, some... Hold on a second. I bet when Christine gets really mad, she pulls the tobacco out of her mouth and throws it at him as he uh, leaves down the front it's porch. It's like corncob pipe. <laughs> a while she'll uh, pull that rope out that's holding her pants up and give him a good whooping oh my god oh mama christine yes are you white trash no i'm not oh she's not white you're another color no i'm white oh okay all right Shh, that's enough all right so now do you live you live with this guy no i don't you don't no and so how do you know it takes him so long to get out of bed? He stays, he, he stays over here. You know, I see. He, I he see. stays the night. But my question is, you know, should I just break up with him and leave it at that? Or should I stay with him? Will this get better? Will it change? How does he feel about the baby? He's, I mean, you know, he's kind of excited. He's going to take care of it. Mm, how about yeah. getting married to him? No. No. No way. How about no, giving right the baby up? Not the way I feel about it right now. Yeah, reasonable. Right how about getting the, putting the baby up for adoption? No, I'm Are, keeping are right. you are you living at home? Yes. Yeah. She's not, not going to uh, risk taking a chance on anyone ruining that child. Yes. She's going to ruin it herself. Right. She'll right. Make, make sure it happens. That's what I like about our listeners. Yeah. No way. You don't leave that thing up to chance. Yeah. You ruin it yourself. There's a chance they might get to a good family. And uh, there's no way. I'm, I'm with you. Won't have anything to do with that. No. So are, None you, of that. are you living at home, Christine? I live with my mother. You live with your brother? Mother. My mother. Oh, your mother. Yeah. I see. All right. And your dad's uh, not around? No. Oh, shocking. And uh, how's your mom feel about uh, Junior? Well, she's happy. I think she wants it more than I do. Oh, really? Mm. Yes. All mm. right. Okay. All right. Please try not to screw up this child. All right. And, and try to work it out with the guy. Yeah. Uh, he up. wants to be a part of the child's life. And maybe you're just going through a little hormonal thing, you know? Okay. Just take a breath. Relax. All right. Give don't, don't do so much thinking, all right? Okay. All right, start saving up money, would you? <laughs> I have money. You do? To I raise have plenty a, of money. To what? Really? Yes, I do. Plenty? Yes. To raise a child? Hold on. Let's take some bets. Uh, 1200 I'm saying uh, falsified insurance claim. $1,200. The, oh, that's the amount? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of the only <laughs> possible way she has money. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm saying it's not a lawsuit. I'm saying insurance yeah. fraud. Law, that's law, what law, I'm law, saying. Law settlement. Right. Christine? Yeah, I make $15 an hour. Oh, what do you do? Were you a checker or something? I work in Dallas at a, a, a technology communication company. Holy wow. mackerel. What do you do over there? I, uh, I'm i manager over a plan. I wow. Just... All right. You're set then. The yeah. kid's going to be living on Easy Street. $15 an hour? Hey, $15 yeah. an hour at yeah. 18. Is, yeah. Listen, I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. Uh, five years ago, I was making 15 bucks an hour, Drew. I know. And, and uh, pretty ecstatic. Is that straight out of high school? Yeah. Yeah, she's uh, 15. I remember having a hypothetical co conversation with my carpet cleaning boss, although now that I look back on the conversation, I realize it sort of was to help him. What would you do for 10 bucks an hour was the title of this <laughs> bizarre conversation I had while driving home from a colony kitchen in his uh, carpet cleaning van at 4 in the morning. And it was like, uh... I was probably 18 or 19. 10 bucks an hour. Uh, work at like a slaughterhouse, like, uh, you know, like shoveling brains or something like that, I guess. Uh, or maybe like a manure farm or something. <laughs> 10 bucks an hour. I, I think that conversation was, he, he, he intentionally had it with me so I wouldn't ask for a raise. Philip? Hi. You're 16. Yeah. You're on with Tony Hawk. What's up? Hi, Philip. Huh? What's going on? All right. Well, hang on there, Philip. Collect your thoughts. You know you're in bad shape or you smoke a lot of weed when someone says, what's up? And you go, huh? Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me process that for a second. Well, what do you mean by that? Let's try Philip one more time. Philip? Yep. What's going on there, brother? Uh, I've been with my girlfriend for about six months now. Mm-hmm. And I went to visit my cousin, and I got hooked up with another girl. This was about a month ago. And she called my cousin, and my cousin called me, and she says that she has HIV. She tested positive. And I went and got a test, like, last week, and it hasn't come in yet. Yeah. I was just wondering how I should tell my girlfriend. How, why hasn't it come in yet? I, it, they have some shipping problem or something. It was like one of the mail-in ones. 
And you, and you got it at a pharmacy? Yes. What type did you get at the pharmacy? I don't remember. It was like... How did you test yourself? Uh, like a pinprick. Oh, but... Philip, you're so full of crap. <laughs> 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 well, that was a nice try, Philip. All right. Why? They don't do the pinprick no, thing? No, it's a cheek swap. Oh, they do a cheek yeah. thing? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> see? True smart. Cold busted. <laughs> don't remember. They had a shipping problem. <laughs> Uh, that was good. All right. Elizabeth. Hello. You're uh, 15. What's up? Yes. How is everybody? Good. good. Hi. Okay. I have a couple questions for Tony. Um, first of all, are you going to have another giant skate park tour? Actually, we were just talking about that tonight, and I certainly hope so. What? That what? will be up to the ESPN. What, what kind of skateboard tour? <clears throat> we did a... We did a tour of different skate parks across the country mm -hmm. and made them into shows for ESPN. Ah. And so, uh, actually, the shows are still, the tour's over, but the shows are going to still be produced. We still have four more to do, actually. Do they have one out here now? Uh, yeah, they have, they have a few skate parks out here. Do they have one in the valley anymore? Um, they have Simi Valley, and they have uh, Ventura. They have one in Orange. Yeah, but not in, like, Ontario. San Fernando Valley. Not there used really. to be a place called, I think it was like Skate Across or something. Mercita, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's where I'd go with my Black Knight board with the uh, clay. We didn't actually have even uh, clay wheels back then. We just said they're made metal. out of... Metal wheels. No, they're made out of soil. Oh. <laughs> dirt. dirt. Yeah, you'd sit on it, it'd crush. They, they shot an there. episode of Chips there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I skate remember across. that. Yeah. Hey, uh, so he's going to do it, Elizabeth. Or he's trying to. We're, do we're it. trying. If if ESPN gives us a go, then we're on. We're on again. Okay, that's cool. And um, when is you guys, are you guys going to have another um birdhouse video coming out? Um, we're we're tentatively working on that as well, but that'll probably be throughout next year. Okay. And who's on Tony Hawk Pro Skater too? Um, all the same guys, including uh, adding Eric Costin, Steve Caballero, and Ronnie Mullen. Jeez, you uh, speak fluent. Skateboard. Skateboard gibberish. Because I, I, here's what it sounded like to me. It was like, and I, I got another question. How's that with that? <laughs> uh, Eric Cavallaro will be on that one. <laughs> and uh, Scott, is that James Dominic? <laughs> well, now the management of ESPN has green lighted the project. And uh, one last uh, follow up. Scott's got it again. <laughs> Drew, did you understand anything she said? I heard exactly what you heard. I thought she was scatting or something. I didn't know she was asking a question. <laughs> it's a good thing she didn't go into any tricks then. I oh, know, yeah. Heard, heard something about Lusenstein. Hey, uh, Elizabeth. Yeah? What are some of your favorite skateboard tricks? Just, I like nose grinds and blunt slides and just all of them. They're all cool. Those guys and blunt slides. Those will both be in the game. Some regals Some braggots and some bros and some bros. <laughs> 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 I was like, I was like Bill, one of Bill Cosby's characters <laughs> calling in. <laughs> all right. See, Tony knows. He has to deal with these people. Speak so. I live it. Fluent skater. Candy? Hey. 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 <laughs> You're 16. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I've been having sex since I was like 11, right? Oh. And um, I don't know if it's because of that, but I have never had an orgasm. So, so you realize that whatever happened when you were 11 was abuse, right? Y yes. Well, how old was the guy? Uh, 15. Yeah. Ooh. It doesn't really 11. matter. 11. Wow. It's abuse, no matter what. Jeez, that's a great guy. So, so, and did anything happen to you before that? Um, no. I don't, I don't think so. Well, when I was really little, my, um, my mom was cooking hot dogs, and I... I Hold on a second. Oh, we, gotta, I, we gotta go <laughs> commercial. <laughs> I don't even want to know... <laughs> And uh, Lusenstein came over with uh, one of those chef hats, made him eight feet tall. Listen. <laughs> I, 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 oh, my God. She was cooking hot dogs. Mom was making hot dogs. It's like a uh, Bergman movie or something. Yeah. <laughs> this is where you guys start placing bets. It's, it's getting a little weird. Uh, yeah, we may do some gambling tonight. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody now. <laughs> yes, I will be right back. Love line, I'll be right back. Tonight's Love Line sponsored by Car Toys and the Cobalt Lounge. Who are these two people? What makes, what makes them tick? Love Line, Adam Carolla, Dr. Andrew. It's on the new rock alternative. Two seven NRK. Yep, 
It is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. Murphy Cargus is here from Sugar Ray, and so is uh, Mark McGrath. Theoretically, let's all just take a little rest before Mark comes back in. He's out there somewhere. Enjoy in the, the peace. <sighs> yeah. It's a moment of silence. Now I can talk. <laughs> Let's go, we're to, we're let's, go to, let's go to a place. Let's go to a place far away where there's where there's music and wind and uh, all right. Mark's back. Here he is. Mark Rapp, Sugar Ray, right? Cindy? Yeah. You're thirty five. Yes, I am. Yeah. A real woman. First of all, Adam, I like worship you. I think you are the funniest person alive. Oh, I thank you. Did you see how hot he is? Drew, I love you too. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah. Why? What's going okay. on? Um, I'm a heroin addict, and I'm once again newly clean after another relapse. Mm. And, you know, every time, uh, i got to be kind of quiet, sorry. Every time that I get clean, I mean, I, I, you know, become really kind of inappropriate sexually. And, and I mean, I always was when I was drinking, but when I did heroin, obviously, I didn't care about that. But it's like this time, it's really weird. It's, I'm like getting into like degrading sexual behavior. Yes. Like, Cindy, that, that all activates the same part of the reward system. Right. And, and that that is a relapse, okay? You've got to contain all this because all all those behaviors, acting out violently, mm -hmm. stealing things, sexually shopping, yeah, all that is activating the same system. So what what, what that's yeah snowboarding too. What what that's saying is that you you've got a lot of very heavy feelings you're trying to manage, and the only way your brain knows how to manage them is activating this reward system that right. you've been utilizing. How's the, how do you mean degrading toward you or your partner? No, like me, like spitting on me and smacking me, you know what I mean? You, as, God as what? bless women. When they say degrading, they mean them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we yeah. mean degrading. We mean you and you. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my heroin addict patients... Get very degrading on your ass. <laughs> often get into this stuff. And as one of them said to me, they said, oh, yeah, that pins my pupils. Meaning, right. you know, they're Jeez. trying to get that same thing going again. I thought I was doing so well because I wasn't stealing this time, you know? Well, but it's the same thing. And what you've got to know is behind that, there's some very, very painful feelings that you've got to sit down with your sponsor and slog through. Right. Because until those feelings are really brought out and your experience with another person, i.e. the sponsor, mm -hmm. this isn't going anywhere. You're going to head on back to so, the heroin. <laughs> Sorry. So you do the heroin and then you stop the heroin, but that sort of is replaced by fill, fill in the blank yeah, activity. Like so inappropriate sexually, like just even flirtatious. And I mean, I'm you, out of you, control. You right. may Give also... us the most inappropriate thing you've ever done. <laughs> You're really horny like, over here. What is it? Today, I was at a meeting and I just started talking to this guy just like totally inappropriate about things I like to do sexually like you know mm. really like not conversation stuff you know what I mean I gotta get out to one of those <laughs> yeah. well, guys will do that to you hey, you may want to go to an SA meeting too Cindy while you're at because sexual addiction is part of the addictive process and if that if that Peace is also there for you in a, in a substantial way. It may need to be dealt with. Well, I'm going to go into a sober living for women and children Great. in January because I know I need to be away from men. I mean, I know. Yeah, and you you may need to go sooner than later. And but again, check out SA and just get get going with your sponsor and sit down and just really get into this stuff. All, All right. right, all right, Cindy. And, 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 and loving you, baby. Okay. I could degrade you good. I like it. <laughs> Come here, you junkie bitch. Hold still. <laughs> yeah. You like it? Taste it. Taste good, doesn't it? Uh -huh. That's right. That's I right. Won. I whacked over some poop earlier. You like that? <laughs> That's good. I eat dog food before I took a crap, too, so it's really nasty bad. That's not cauliflower and pineapple and whatnot. That's, that's dog. That's cow can there, baby. Bark. Bark. I'm getting horny, man. Bark like the dog poop that's on my penis. Yeah. <laughs> Ass, grass, sandwiches, and brown sauce. Oh, yeah. Oh. Remember that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was one of our better calls. All right, Cindy. Bye. I'm good at degrading. I, you know, I, I really, I haven't told this story in a little while, but I, I, I dated a stripper for a while. She's a little bit crazy. She was great though. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, are. she was great. Yeah, she was she was a little crazy though, and she she had a little problem with guys, and she wanted a little degrading. She wanted a little tough love, a little a little a uh, little naughty talk in, in the bed, ass. a little slapping <laughs> ass. So she said sure. to me, you know, she she, she oh. goes, start talking. Come on, come on, get mean. Come on, get dirty, get nasty, get mean, get insulting. Let's start talking. Start talking. And I go, <laughs> how I do go, you push that? Oh, yeah, I, mean, like, I, I couldn't get. I was like tired. And I go, uh, well, um, <laughs> I don't like your mom. Say that. <laughs> I had an ass full of her. <laughs> and she was like, that's oh, good. what that's are you talking good. about? I was like, I, I, that's the meanest thing I can think She's of. Like, I really, I hate that lady. <laughs> <laughs> like, then so she gets angry. And I'm like, I, I'm, t I'm telling you seriously, that's the meanest thing I can think of. And I, but I mean it. I hate her. You know, she's like, all right, forget it. Get out of here. That's always Bullets. scary, though. Yeah, she That's was a, a scene. She was English. It was great. Pushing oh. the envelope. Oh. Talk to her to me, okay? Um, uh, 
I hate your mom. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, that's your... like to bang your friends. Yeah. Like what? Put some weight on. Yeah. <laughs> you talk about being smart, but I've seen no signs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dirty means it means kind of it's kind of like movie dirty. They don't mean reality dirty, right? R right. Well, careful what you ask for, man. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Know. Careful what you ask for. You wanna, if you want to go in that territory, that's right. You better wear a helmet, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> ben, are you wearing a helmet? Hey, ben. ben. Yeah. You're 16. What's you up? Basically, I'm taking a whole bunch of medicines and they're really killing my sex drive. Let's no. see. What medicines, you on? Oh, uh, let's see. Clonidine. Prozac. Oh, the Prozac was killing your sex yeah. drive. Resperidol. Resperidol's not helping. Um, Depakote and Symmetrol. You got to talk to your doctor about the, the, this fact because it, it's not something you have to tolerate. There, there are things they can do to help you. And Prozac really shuts down people's sex drive, so okay. that may be the one. What's he got? A hey, uh, Ben, just to save time, next time someone asks you what you're taking, just tell them what you're not taking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we we'll get through the call. Uh, why? Why are you on all of this stuff at uh, sixteen? Uh, Tourette's syndrome and ADD. Wow, Tourette's is cool. Yeah, hey, you got a you got a you got a full house there, uh, Drew. What about it? Needs to be on all this stuff. Yeah, probably. But what about uh, is it? I mean, I know I'm not him, but is it? All, he's 16. Does he? He's got a lot of. Uh, he's got a lot of irons in the fire. You know what I mean emotionally. Yeah. I mean, does he need a sex drive right now? Well, interesting point. 16? As yeah. a male? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Well, I, it's I, your I, bread and butter, baby. Whole world. I, I, I just Come mean, on. Can he, I, I don't know, maybe... You maybe ran a Cheryl Teague's crap. poster? Come on. What do you mean? Yeah, I, I mean, can he, like, work on his own crap for a little while? Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of stuff all going those. on in his life. Yeah. Sounds pretty heavily medicated to me. Well, I, you are, and I, I would just say you don't have to tolerate a drop in sex drive. You can talk to the doctor about alternative interventions. More medicine. Or, or, or things they could add. All right, <laughs> like the, well the Prozac is the well sexual drive killer, then. Uh, period. The, the Zoloft, Paxil, uh, 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 Prozac, they really shut it down. How about the Z-Pack? I'm on a Cithromax right now. No, no, this is okay, okay, I'm going to But uh, Wellbutrin, uh, <laughs> Remron, and Serazone don't do that. So. Okay. But do you, when your sex drive is gone, I always ask you this, how do you know? I mean, do you care? I mean, it's like it, not being hungry. Some people, you know, yeah. you're not yeah. hungry. Do you miss it? Yeah, when it's subtle, some people don't. They and they, they and it's it can be kind of a problem because some people are depressed because they're not in a relationship, and then suddenly they don't want a relationship. But uh, in other people, it, it's such a profound shutdown. It, it's just bizarre. People yeah. people touching looks kind of like Ooh, why? Especially that age. I mean, that's when you're. Your flower is blooming. Yeah, is going, going going from uh, you know yeah, jet jet fuel to nothing is gonna right. be a really jolt. Concord to a Cessna is yeah. kind of rough. Right. Yeah. yeah. My, uh, my, that made sense. My flower was in full bloom, but uh, alas, there was no bee to pollinate me. <laughs> yeah. So I had to pollinate my camper. Right. Full oh. amoeba. <laughs> Your own territory. Amoeba. Um, hey. You're 16. What's up? Um, I was wondering because this is for Doctor Drew. Yeah. Um, he, you were saying earlier about how, like, you know how um, when you go to raise and they sell you, like, other crap besides E, and how that was, like, actually better for you than actually taking E? Like, I was just wondering if that was true, because... Well, not better for you, but not as not as known to be as clearly dangerous as the E itself. Well, what do you mean? Like, what kind of other stuff? Well, it, dep yeah, it depends what the stuff is. I mean, oftentimes they're giving you heroin and LSD, or speed and LSD, and LSD is getting close to ecstasy in terms of the damaging effects but ecstasy we know is a profound neurotoxin and there really isn't anything more damaging to your brain that you can get you can ingest right now so uh like even you, you, if you don't take that much of it yes even if you're ray in a rave in palm desert you do right. a half even your high school friends are there it's all cool even the dot punk is playing you get a bunch of okay. friends around you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. bad news though it's a scary thing okay so like everything is just still bad but if it feels work. good, it's bad. All right. Yeah. yeah, there's no free lunch in nature. When you when you start, <laughs> you do stuff that's overstimulating to parts of the brain, they shut down. Yeah, they go away. Yeah. And so then you don't have those parts of your brain working anymore, so you can't feel good anymore. I'm trying to think of the best, cheapest buzz. I mean, to me, you know, don't Many eat, thins. don't eat for a couple of days and just drink a little bit. You know, <laughs> Fast. you don't have to You'll take that God. much in. Yeah, is it is it is it a good a good angle there? Yeah, uh, let, let's explore ways we can <laughs> advise <laughs> young kids how to get a cheap thrill. Cheapest buzz is family, and just being tight with them. <laughs> it's the holiday season. <laughs> You're gay. <laughs> yeah. I am gay. You deviated from your queer as fuck. Watch it, Molly. Yeah. You're uh, 15. What's up? I have a question for Mark. Yes, Molly. Um, me and my friend are in love with you, and we love the candies commercials. 
Yes. And we were wondering, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. What is that? that? What is that? We it's, heard he's about raping this girl in the shower. <laughs> yeah, we heard about She that. was consenting. And how it got banned from TV. Yeah. And we want to know, like, how you feel about that, like... Well, it's kind of funny, because I watched a little Kim video, and, uh, you know, it's like the next level uh, of degradation. Then I watch my thing, and it's like, uh, it, it's not a big deal. It, it's funny, it's sort of the hype machine working over time. And if you've seen any of this sort of uh, the publicity shots of it, it it's 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 very tame it's it's very mild and uh it's it's um who was that uh, Alyssa there, milano no it was jody lino key from nash hold bridges on. hold on is that your mom no. oh yeah it's fine mom she can watch so you, you did you did like a like a I did like a shower little, thing little right? like 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 yeah but everybody's wearing body suits and it was just sort of implied and it just it got like blown away out of proportion but uh, it, it's kind of funny the way like you know right no, i liked it it was like that scene from kentucky fried movie where the chick's getting porked in the shower and her boobs are <laughs> yeah, up remember the catholic school girls door. rule remember that? yeah in trouble yeah <laughs> no but it, it's 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 harmless but it's it's funny to see the controversy Jeez, so, you know, all of mark's best work ends up on the editing room floor it and really the does ER, the candy the whole, the whole, the whole Thing. Look at the buzz it's creating, though. We yeah, stop that's, talking that's about what it. it's about. Yeah. People are talking about it. You know, it's, at the end of the day, we're talking about nothing. Right. And How so about that election? Was fine. Uh, in body suits, you have an erection? I had a complete renob. Really? <laughs> what? It's a boner backwards. Yeah, you, you'd have to. <laughs> no, I did. I'm a human being. I'm a male. And you'd I'm, have to. Yeah. yeah she's a great looking girl, and it was a lot of fun to do, and they paid me for it. That's the funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So it's like the prostitute giving you 20 bucks. At the end of, <laughs> yeah. end of the night. Here, you were good. Later. <laughs> Sarah? Uh-huh. You're uh, 20. What's up? Um, okay. I'm, okay. I, it, like, when I masturbate, I have no problem, like, getting myself off. Mm -hmm. But, like, it, whenever I'm with a guy, like, sexually, like, I just can't get satisfied. Yeah. Like. Even through oral sex? Well, like. That, like, I love foreplay and stuff, but, like, and I'll orgasm like that, but it's just, like... Well, that's, that's even if not they have, bad, like, right? a big, Even if they have, like, a big, like, <laughs> dick or whatever, like, okay, yeah, sorry, right. my phone's going out. I see. But, um, you know, I, I just, I can't get excited. How about and this? Then, even if, like, they're totally hot, because, like, I'm, like, I'm pretty hot, so it's, like... You sound I'm hot. I'm a pretty hot guy. Well, let me tell you something. Help yourself along in the process of us right. making love to you. Know, it's I not know. a big deal. Guys yeah. usually don't care. No, no. I do, I do, because I love, like, from the back, and I love on top. Ooh. And I'll, like, sit on top and all kind of, like, stick my hands, like, you know, like, uh -huh, whatever. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's just because, like, I don't know if it's just because I'm, like, Maybe you're not really, in, out, you, but, like, you may not be really into the guys you're with. And it, probably. Yeah, maybe maybe a more a more connected relationship over a period of time. We can work well, this stuff Sarah, out. Sarah, you yeah. said you, you had an orgasm during foreplay, right? Not really. <laughs> I kind of faked it. But I can totally oh. orgasm, <laughs> like, by myself. I see. Like, so you've never me, you never had one f via the oral sex route with a guy. No. Well, the irony no. of that is that usually girls that, that can masturbate and bring themselves to climax usually can't have sex. You know, usually right. can't climax with a guy having sex because they know how to do it themselves. Yeah. So right. it's sort of like a you know yeah. role reversal there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think no, just keep trying. Why, you know, and stay with the guy. No, that's why like I don't get. And so I'm like, so you, the girl had asked me like, oh, have you ever like had a boyfriend or whatever, and I haven't just because. I get sick of guys really fast, so I just kind of like, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. they're in, in there. <laughs> they're in yeah. is the problem. After like two months and kind of just, you know. Yeah, they're in is the problem. Nothing wrong with loving yourself. I, yeah, you'll, 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 once you find the right guy, this will probably take care of itself, I suspect. But, you know, it's funny. Guys are so mechanical. I mean, mm. it doesn't matter where their head is at. It doesn't right. matter if they hate chicks and yeah. they hate mama and they, every, time, every time they have sex, they have sex with mama or the devil or whoever it is, <laughs> they can get off. It's a task to us. Every time. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a goal to be no reached. Problem. Well, Every time they can <laughs> yeah. they can get off, but you women, must. if they ain't in the right place emotionally, and Sarah's far from that place, I mean, yeah. But what's so weird? Like I said, I'm like, if you can by yourself, yeah, I know. Yeah, but, uh, but, but, she, but she can kind of get to that place by herself. Which with a person, it doesn't, yeah. well, it doesn't block him out. You yeah. know, I mean, big deal. I agree though with Mark in that I look at the vagina like a baseball mitt, and <laughs> when you first get it, it's it's tough. You, it doesn't work that well. It's not that not that good. But after you know you oil it up, a little. oil it up, have Dad park the car on <laughs> yeah. it overnight, sleep on on your new bed, put it under the mattress between the box screen and the mattress, and really work it in. Put a belt around it, <laughs> stuff a ball in there, and really work. After a while, it gets worked in, and then it starts closing by itself <laughs> you don't have to squeeze it's a, something just hit it and it'll come down on them like a venus flytrap that's how the vagina is and they loosen up like a slot machine or right. something yeah. i don't know but no better fit when they go they go and she's going she's paying off at home but uh she's dry with a guy and i do agree that's an emotional thing all right we're gonna take a break we'll be back hello 
And Murphy, you're both here from Sugar Ray. Drew's here from Pasadena. Chrissy? Hello? You're 21. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Well, I wanted to ask Mark if he had any plans on getting into another movie again, like he did in Father's Day. <laughs> well, there's ER the movie. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> after my ER experience, I, I, I was not waiting for the phone to ring. But, um, you know, I'm going to make this next record with Sugar Ray and um, see where that takes us, you know. But, uh I mean, acting's tough. I, it's I, very tough. It, it's it's very tough, but um, it, it's um, it, it's something that maybe in the future I'd like to get into. But right now, I'm just concentrating on the band. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have a question for uh, Doctor Drew. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I've been in um two back to back relationships for the past uh, five years, and I just got out of one about six months ago. And like ever since then, like every time I think about getting into anything with another guy, I don't really think of them. Like, in, as a relationship, I just kind of think of them as, like, a basically a piece of ass. You know, I know that sounds bad, but... No, it's good. <laughs> we'll check off to that later. <laughs> <laughs> it's I all going in the, the hopper. I haven't the really... The jack hopper. Spin that really... thing around, you never know what falls out. That's, that's what I love about jacking off. You lie there and you start spinning that jack <laughs> yeah, hopper. Right. Yeah. Could it be something right. from high school? The Could mind like, Rolodex, like, right? I was in Vegas. Yeah. There's some chick in the buffet. <laughs> She's pretty hot. Well, just, Filipino like boys. Something will fall out and your, your balls will go, well, we're running <laughs> yeah. with it. Here we there go. Is. <laughs> there you go. That old poster on the wall. Like, yeah. watching, anything. Yeah. Watching Shepard Smith, all of a sudden your balls are hanging low. <laughs> Chrissy? <laughs> all right, so no. you, you look at men as uh, just pieces of ass. Well, yeah, and it's, it's not that I actually go and do anything with them. It's just it kind of turns me off towards the whole relationship thing, and I don't know if I just... I just I don't like guys that much anymore. And I don't know if that's just because something is wrong with me, or if it's just because I'm 21, or if it's yeah, because it's... the fact that my mom had so many around after she divorced my dad, and they all sucked. Uh, uh, probably some yeah. probably some combo of all those oh, things, oh, frankly. Oh. Because you, you combo played there. It, it sounds like you were clinging to idealized relationships, and those didn't really pan out. They didn't turn out to be to solve your problems, and now you're going the other extreme. Well, which is to, I, if we, which as long is, as we're talking with food analogies, I would, <laughs> I, would, I, would I would say that the the multiple boyfriends who are pricks that your mom brought home would be the entree. And the sick of guys is sort of the salad, right? And the been in too many long term relationships, sort of the soup. But the the main entree, the it's the South river's Mary edge steak entree, yeah, having is is mom. definitely that. Yeah, but, but Did it, any of those guys get to you? No, no. But, but again, oh, drink? Re realize that it, I suspect the kind of mode you're in is idealizing the relationships. They don't fall; they fall out, so you de idealize. Well, it's. It's almost like, I mean, yeah, I can understand that because I kind of cling to them even right. when they suck. That's but, right. Like, it got to the point where I would get bored and I would pick fights with the people just yeah. so I'd have a reason to leave. Right. Well, that's, that again, this is sabotaging. Yeah. This is not wanting yeah. to be vulnerable. And the, it, it's, uh, you should sort this out, but the problem is you may pick some awful guys along the way here. All right. Well, you listen, you've been in two real long term relationships, yeah. right? Why don't you just take a little break? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. It's just hard because. They don't really like leave me alone. Are you hot? It's <laughs> going in the chat copper. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God nobody's normal out there. You know what I mean? We, we're all the same. So that's well, the good news. It, as so many women, and men do this too, I think women do it even more. They use relationships and the opposite sex is such a big part of how they feel about themselves. Yeah. Definitely. And if yeah. people are what else do you have though? You I, know, I, she seems I, pretty honest with everything. I, I don't know. Like I mean, you got the cable. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Well, you get to that look at boring. people who are having relationships and make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> yeah. but, the, but the thing is, is <laughs> if it's constant I mean, I was the exact same way. I just couldn't get laid. I worked construction. I lived with a bunch of idiots. I slept on a bunk bed when right. I was 23. And it wasn't coming my way. If it was coming my way, I would have just wrote it out until it dried up. And, <laughs> and I, I don't, 
I, I can't fault a lot of these girls who are because you are them. Who are twenty? No, I wish I was them. Me too. And it's it was, coming it their not way, right, and they're not ready for to reason. Stop. But can you give any advice to help them understand where they're at? Helps them understand what, why, why. Well, I think we told them. It, you know, yeah. it has to do with the mom and your relationship with her, and all these strange guys coming through the house. And now you're kind of freaked mm. out by guys, and how you're having a little trouble with intimacy. But how does that bonding. get so sad? Does that get so sexualized for people? Everything turns to sex. Right. It's right. Weird. You you see your. So weird. We could break us four down right here right now and have a love line show on your own. So like, yeah, yeah. that's the interesting thing. Like, no, yeah, all you know what I mean? That. Yeah. Everything. I guess I that's why we share right now. Everything gets processed through the brain filter and comes out sex. Yep. Right. Out the uh, the lower brain. And I, yeah, and I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what that is. And, and, and the, I know. The, the filtering process is different for men than women. Right. But it's the same Emotional, result. Emotional, physical. Just yeah, just different. Yeah, men are like, Rrr. Yeah. Are like uh. <laughs> yeah, with but with women, if if where do you go to college? <laughs> USC, man. My That's dad right. paid a lot of money to get me in there. I remember that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. all right. I don't know why you're it's so my surprising. Daughter. No, you're very intelligent. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's you guys very... used to like me. No, we do. We still did. Okay, give me a call, <laughs> Tiffany. Hello. What's up? Nothing. Um, Mark, can I ask you a question? Of course you can, Tiffany. How are you tonight? Oh, oh my God. I'm just fine. Thank you. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing great now that I'm talking to you. Um, he knows but, how to work the ladies. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm really Especially nervous. Especially when you get older. <laughs> um... I had a question, like, when are you guys going to be releasing a new single or anything for your new CD? You know what? Right now we're ensconced in the studio right now, so we're uh, we're busy doing the new record, and we're looking for a uh, single release in the spring huh? and have the record out in uh, late spring, early summer. Oh, really? Well, thank you for your inquiry. That's great. Um, well, what else? I love you, too. <laughs> well, I was wondering, like, like uh, what, who's what, this now? Uh, what's more? Still um, Tiffany. Oh. Is this someone else? That's someone else. They hand the phone. Mark? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, now I'm like, <laughs> Hello? Hey, hello. Yeah, we're here. Who's this? Oh, this is Tiffany's mother. She's about, she's, she's freaking out over here. Yeah. Hi, Tiffany's, Tiffany's mother. Mark? I have a mom, too. I'm very partial to moms. Oh, you, I don't know if you remember us. But we I do. That's the funny thing. <laughs> I don't know where you're from, but I remember Tiffany in the United States. I do remember her. You remember us from Tower Records? Yes, I do. How are you guys doing? Fine. It's great. Great. Did you get my Christmas card? No. All right. It's on the way. Oh, well, thank you, Mark. Absolutely. I your beer bottle. Hey, well, that was definitely me. Hey, <laughs> t hey, hey Tiffany's mom? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, homeschooling. That's, huh? That's uh, two words. Homeschool. <laughs> this, oh. this Tiffany's out of control. Oh, she's... She's just so in love with Mark. I know, but there'll be others. <laughs> many, many others. <laughs> right. Richard Ashcroft's around the corner somewhere. <laughs> yes, there'll be. Uh, there's other predators out there yeah. besides Mark. Mark can't get to all of them. <laughs> she, she's just, Mark is number one. Well, that's very sweet of her. You guys have a great holiday season. Well, thank you, Mark. God right. bless. Happy holidays. Hey, uh, Tiffany's mom. Oh, oh, Mark? Yeah, yeah, this is Adam. Oh, Do you have uh, like a retarded son who's into oh, me or anything? Or <laughs> no one there? Adam, can you ask uh, Mark if any way that Tiffany can meet him? Yeah, let me see if I can go in between that. Uh, Mark, <laughs> yes, come on down. We're pretty tight. Uh, yeah. Can you, uh, my friend Tiffany's mom's on the other phone? Yeah, I, you may know her from uh, the Tower Records, the beer bottle thing, and the sure. beer bottle incident. Yep. Uh, is there any way you can go over to her house? No, <laughs> no. Where do you guys live? We live in Norwalk. Oh, Norwalk! Oh, wow, it's a beautiful country out there. That's I got a uh, Warren out there in Norwalk. I can't get out there. Sorry, Actually, Norwalk's got a good mom. ice rink, though. I'm a hockey fan. Hey, uh, Tiffany's mom. Uh huh. You uh, you keep an eye on that girl, all right? Yeah. That's she's, right. Yeah, she just wants to meet Mark so bad. I I understand. I thought she met at Tower Records. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Man, oh, I've changed a little. I got yeah. a beer belly now. You won't believe. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, though, this is going great, and all have right. a great holiday season. Okay, well, you too, Mark. Mom. Take care, you guys. Oh okay. boy, Tiffany's mom sounded younger too. than Tiffany. I know. It's like uh, Sandra D is your mom. I mean, that, that, that's, that is bizarre. But it's weird when your parents... Aren't you supposed to get out of something that your parents get into or approve of when you're 16? Yeah. That's how you know scary I mean? we are as a band. We're that yeah. threatening. You know, it's like... It's what I mean? Hey, I like them, too. If cool. You're, if that's you're why we're 16 so cool. and you're really into Mark McGrath, and then your mom starts getting into Mark McGrath, now you got to move on, right? you got to hate it. Yeah. I, I feel like Don't Fabian, you? believe me. But no, it's, it's you know what? It's very endearing. It's very sweet. And, you know, God bless it. I mean, people used to call me worse things than, hey, I want to meet you. Oh, yeah. And they still do. <laughs> Don? Yeah? You're 25. Yeah. What's up? Um, my husband and I have been married for five years. 
and it's um, we've been wanting to try a threesome. It's not like there's anything lacking or anything. We're just curious about it. We are, or he is. Both of us. Well, well, well. I am. You are. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Um, wait, wait. Whose idea was it? Uh, actually, both of us were drunk one night, and I had been thinking about it for a while. I see. It's a good time for rationale. <laughs> he brought it up, and I just kind of like um, liked the idea a lot. You, you want to get a woman in there? Yeah. Let yeah. me tell you something about that real quickly. Just from just from hearing stories about people. Sure. You can never go back from that. In you bands. can have the fantasy. You can have it dance around your head. You can have it be a total fantasia thing. But you can never get back from that. And whether the two of you are capable enough to handle that, I don't know. It's dangerous territory to go into. I, I've I've not seen a relationship that actually survived that. Well, you don't know me very well. Yeah, I'm kidding you. Sorry, Gar. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that you, you didn't have a relationship with survive for a while with it. No, but are you still with that person? Absolutely not, Drew. Yeah. And it, it, it's never survived in my experience as Man. well. It's dangerous yeah. territory to go into. And it, all you know, all kidding aside, it's it's a serious thing. You can yeah. never survive that. Have, yeah. have you, I've never seen a relationship survive. They, they, for survive. a while, they do, and the people go, "Oh, we're just exploring. We're this." Yeah. Right. Then then all hell breaks loose. And then eventually. the children. Then the children get involved. Yeah. yeah. All right, but I'd like to add to that. <laughs> One is is I think that a lot of it is an excuse for women who want to have a lesbian encounter, don't want to admit to being a lesbian, so it makes it okay to yeah. be a threesome. What they're saying is is I've never been with a woman. I'd like to try to be with a woman. I don't want to admit I'd like to try to be with a woman, and I'm a, in a committed relationship. Right. The so not I'll have a threesome. When I wake up sober, I'll be really bummed. But uh, the other part is the sabotage. And the reason it doesn't work <laughs> the guys are so bad like is that. catch 22. It's like the whole reason you had the threesome was to sabotage. Right. So it's a self fulfilling yeah. prophecy. It wasn't the threesome that killed it, it was the idea of having the threesome that was going to sabotage a relationship that killed it anyway. There's nothing left to be said. We're going to take a break. Seven. Love Live, the very hot Lisa Gibbons. Oh, I love ah, it. it was too long, a, too long a beat in there. I almost got it right, though. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. It's Love Live 1 800 L O V E 191. Me and uh, hey, uh, Drew, mm. I was just explaining the difference between a sweet potato and a yam to uh, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've, been, the we've been a Martha Stewart Boring. moment. <laughs> Pray tell. <laughs> She didn't know the difference between a sweet potato and a yam. No, I did. I thought, well, now, I thought you could melt your marshmallows on either one. No, you... you but my children difference. evidently have been deprived all this time. You candy the yams, not the sweet potato. Okay. So sweet potato you make the pie out of. Okay. The sweet potato pie. Mm -hmm. mm, so what is soul a yam? Food. A yam is essentially a sweet potato on steroids. I mean, it's... Yeah. Like, here's, here's, what, here's the way it would break down, if you'd ask me. You have, uh, let's say on the far right of the potato chart, you'd have yam. And on the far left, you'd have a baking potato, just a regular russet potato, right? right? right. Sweet potato would be closer to the yam on the chart, but toward the middle a little bit. Uh huh. If, if you get my drift, a, uh -huh. a sweet potato is somewhere between a yam and a regular potato. Closer to the yam family. Whoa! Okay. All right. My stepdad, John, right. he, yeah. Loves sweet potatoes, but he will not eat yams. And that's another thing that drives me insane each and every year <laughs> because I yell at him. A, 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 a yam is more sweet potato. Do you understand? <laughs> it's a sweet potato plus more. It's like a really good sweet potato. How can you like sweet potatoes and not like yams? Can't you just put enough brown sugar on it to make it okay? You can. And but, butter. But, but using your logic, why not just start with a baking potato, put a ton of brown sugar well, and marshmallows on it? I didn't realize you were it. such an Epicurean. I don't, if I knew what that meant, I would agree. I, yes, no. I am. Thank Adam, you, Drew. What? Is Lisa trying to get out of here or not? She put her jacket on. No, but, no, I, but <laughs> no, only because it's cold and because, you know what, quite frankly, it makes me nervous just looking at the things written on your screen with these callers. It just kind of makes me nervous. So I do have to hear some phone calls. All right. Why don't All you right. pick one? Do you, do you have well, just, one that yeah. jumps out? Oh, I see. We have one. Sarah. Well, take Sarah and then Lisa can pick the next right. one. Sarah, you're 21. What's up? Oh, my God. Hi. I'm hey. good. Good. How are you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? Good. What do you want? Um, I'm calling because I have completely lost my sex drive. Mm hmm What um, happened? At 21? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. Like, I have a boyfriend, and we've been together, I guess, like a year and a half. And I just, within the last few months, I've just lost it. What's he doing? Is he doing anything wrong? No. Emotionally? No. He's not disappointing you in any way? Not in any way. I still find him well, extremely attractive. and I More importantly, when yeah. a young, healthy adult suddenly loses libido, more often than not, that's medication. Are you taking any new medication? No, last year I was a lot, but what, what were you now. taking? Um, I was on something called Prevacid. I had a lot of stomach no, problems it's last a, year. No, it's a stomach medicine. And yeah, how about birth control pill? Yeah, I am on that. When did you start that? Um, last December. Doesn't sound like you need it, though. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. What? Uh, it really? Do you think you may be falling out of love with this guy? No, not at all. No. It's it's not that. It's. I, it's not even, I don't even feel like masturbating or anything anymore either. Are you I see. sure no change in the dose of your birth control pill or anything like that? No. And not, are anything else going? Them. Are you excessively like, exercising or training for sports or anything of that sort? No. Because <laughs> when, when really when it's a tangible loss, when sex is sort of like, ugh, why bother? That's usually a biological event. I mean, that's something that, you know, that's sort of, that's sort of very absolute shutdown. Uh, that that rings of biology for me. Did and, you put uh, some weight on, Sarah? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, you just laughed when uh, Drew asked if you were working out. So you're fat. I, no, 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 no. Uh, no, but were, were you getting at the like girls who are anorexic or whatever? Yeah, is it? Yeah, right. That was the ear. Okay, so hey, Sarah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So it's not medication. It's not any weight change. It's not depression. You're happy with your mate, right? And you just feel uh, not only shut down toward him, but even when you're alone. Yeah, pretty much. How about uh, kickstarting yourself with a little uh, a little sex? You know, how about just holding still, letting him have sex with you? No, I do. It's not that oh, we good. don't ever. Fantastic. But... <laughs> you're just not into it. Not like I used to be, no. E I used to really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, were you overactive before, maybe? I think so. My first years of college, I think I was. Do you have, did something happen in your past that's uh, coming back to haunt you emotionally? Well, uh -oh. yeah. I mean, I was molested when I was 12. There you go. Ah, there, you there go. we go. Well, that was and the only, that was the, I, we had to flip the final card. Yeah, and there's then, one other card here to go, I think. And is there, is there bipolar illness in your family? Not that I know of. There's a lot of high anxiety. And I used to be really depressed when I was in high school, but. Who molested you when you were growing up? I didn't know him. It was but, a complete stranger. Oh, refreshing. <laughs> and uh, you, you never, uh, I mean, was it a consistent thing or just happened once? Just a one-time thing. So it's sort of a rape. Almost, yeah. yeah. I see. Well, I mean, that, I got away, so it yeah, wasn't, but. Yeah, that that sounds like it could contribute, but that does, still doesn't sound like all of it. And yeah. how often are you having sex now? Uh, maybe once every few weeks. Nice. How much when you were when you were sort of peaking? How, how frequently? Almost. Every, at least every other day, I guess. Okay. All right. I mean, all right. Well, I, I don't know what the answer to this one is. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, Drew, what about this? And uh, Lisa as well. You know, if you took your life, you could probably, you'd see cycles. Oh, you absolutely. know what I mean? There, there were yeah, times, absolutely. especially mm -hmm. with women, where uh, a lot of women, I, I know you said surprised earlier in the call that, oh, at 21, you lost your sex drive. But there's a lot of women who are doing it a lot more at 31 than they are at 21. And, and they're sort of everyone sort of has their their uh, salad days, as it were. And maybe she's just going through a little ebb and flow sort of situation here. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to make it too easy, but maybe that maybe that's a, a, a contributing factor. And certainly she sounds like she has some mood instabilities and uh, that can contribute to those sorts of cycles. Brian. Yes, you're 19. Sure. What's up? I just wanted to call and say hi to Lisa. Hi, Brian. How's it going? That's very nice of you. It's going well, actually. Well, good. Are you enjoying your job at Extra? Yeah, it's good. It's working out. It's working out well. Um, you know, I've I've only been there a couple of months, and in that in that amount of time, uh, we've seen some some pretty dramatic changes. And I I really you know I worked for um, I worked for ET for a lot of years, so I, um, I I'm excited to get back and you know talk to celebrities. I enjoy that. I like 
you know, it's one of the perks, Adam, of going out to all the... Sure. See oh. all the movies. No, and... no, I make the scene. Who are you talking well, to? Well, I know uh, you do. I can be found uh, on just about every red carpet in town. You, you know what, Lisa, that, <laughs> that may, people are, can't really see from their television set is the quality of the organization. I mean, there's really excellent producers and the executives are really... Oh, no, no, it you, shows really. through. It does, no, but they're No, no, no. They're no, really, he's very... not sucking up. It is. It's a, it's a talented team of people. It's really, yeah. it's really fun to work there. And... Um, you know, I yeah. like the I like the diversity. I like the consumer stuff. I like the medical stuff. Um, you know, and I'm very very happy, honest to goodness, that that Drew is working with us on sex and relationship because I think people are. I mean, obviously, it's an area that that people are um, wildly interested in, and it's it's challenging to find a way to cover it that's um, tasteful. That's well, that's tasteful, and that's also um, substantive and right. and right. real and. But All of that. Be, be honest. Who was your first choice? Was it Dina Dell? Was it Dr. Laura? <laughs> I mean, who, did, who did your people go after? How many first? How many folks Adam, did you get to before Drew? They, they wanted you at first. Dr. John. <laughs> Dr. 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 J. John. <laughs> Dr. Dre. Dr. Hogly Wogly from the Tyler, Texas barbecue and Puff Bananas. Daddy. Puff Daddy was our first choice, but we couldn't get him. So uh, you, you eventually ended up uh, with Drew because the price was right. And, and and what about Mary Hart? How much do you hate her? What about Mary Hart? How do we get to Mary Hart? <laughs> you must hate her. I do not. Really? Why? Why? Really? Yeah, why? Why, you, why don't what? you no, hate why her? Why would, I'm you, why would she? Why would she? I don't know. I want to know, too. Why don't you hate her? Because <laughs> there's nothing to hate about her. Really? Mary's, Mary's Is she a, a nice great, woman? She's a great lady. She's a good mom, and she's uh, you know twenty years been doing that show. Oh and, my god! You know that's pretty phenomenal, actually. But didn't she have her legs insured or some what sort of nonsense? What a great bit of PR that I was. I know, but I don't trust that. that I think it was sickness. for like a day. All right. Well, what about Lopez having her booty insured? I know more more publicist nonsense, and and. Uh, Oh, Mary sings. Oh, remember when Mary was giving uh, people epileptic uh, seizures? Oh, remember the sound that? of the voice or something? Yeah, that was my favorite part of E.T. Hi, that hi, must hi, have hi. been, ooh, I'm going to say that was like, uh, I don't know, 86 or something. It was somewhere, it somewhere was, back in the 80s. It was kind of early. Drew, did you remember that story? No. The Mar You know about seizures, right? I do. Certain things can trigger them? Yeah. Am I right? Kind of. Well, you were talking about it the other night on the show that certain things can trigger seizures. I was talking about cocaine seizures. and triggering seizures, I believe. All right. Well, ahead, let's, yeah. Don't crap on my point. Coke, yeah. Mary Hearts, all the same. Hi, hi. Her, there was somebody who was calling from, or, or some some woman in the Midwest who would... No, would, it was a guy, wasn't was it? Was it a guy? I, I don't know. She, he or she was having seizures uh, because of Mary's voice. <laughs> this, I, I'm sure it was nonsense. Has Mary ever been here with you? No, no, we've not been together. Is she a good person? She is. Really? Had, uh, uh, you, you need to invite her to come over. You'd have a good time with her. All right. I we had. I uh, certainly will. What's that, Drew? I'm, I'm blanking your former partner name. Who? Uh, who's your former former partner? John name? Tesh. John. Tesh. Oh, John Tesh comes on. Uh, who's quite, a great quite guy. a bit. We love Teshi. Yeah. Yes, we do love him. We do. It's not popular to love him, but I, I'll admit it anyway. I've I love it. I've never understood it. Well, there's certain guys like Tesh and uh, Hasselhoff and Dr. Drew who you just don't want to be associated <laughs> with. You're considered a geek or a square, not with it, not now, not edgy. And there's a handful of guys like we we love John Tesh and we love Tom Arnold, two of the most hated people in show business. And uh, downtown Julie Brown. <laughs> I really enjoy it too. She's oh. she's fabulous. I know, but everyone hates her. I don't they get really that. do. I don't I listen, there's certain people that are hated for no good reason and certain people Oh, and well I'll I'll add Carrot Top to that list. There's certain oh, yeah. people that people Ow! just <laughs> don't seem to like, but I find myself liking them. Well they're they're really happen to be they happen to be great people. I guess so. Or they're just so effed up and needy we feel sorry for them. <laughs> It's one or the other. <laughs> Not in Tesh's case, though. He's a he's a good man. He's a very very solid man. All he's, right. He is not, however, hmm. and, and Drew. Let me just make this point here. Um, first of all, hmm. Brian, thank you so much. That was very nice of you to to uh, be concerned about my extra experience. Now, when you guys watch Extra, you're going to see him doing the sex survey thing, hmm. and um, I just want to get that in before oh, I go. Oh, I see. Yeah, go <laughs> before ahead, I right. go, you know, yeah. I had to plug and self promote. Any, any, tid any tidbits about the sex survey you want to throw out there? Well, the the thing that interested me was, would you have sex to get a promotion at work? Oh, yeah. 
And um, absolutely, a, bend over, Anderson. A surprising number of people. I'm going to take like as a spot tomorrow. Well, uh, it, what I think was surprising, if I remember, oh, right, is really? more, more men said they would by a large margin than women. Yeah. And it's sort of stereotypically something you worry that women get stuck having having to do. But uh, men sort of want to take that on uh, and carry that banner. Yeah, but you're not. But that, you know what? I think that the good news for women in this is it shows that there are, you know, theoretically more women in positions of power to promote yep. the men. So I think that's good for our, one for our side. No, Although it doesn't, well, hold specify, on. That, that's it doesn't com- specify sex with women. Right. No, it did not. That is a complete hypothetical. It I was. Mean. And listen, the equivalent of having, of course, every guy's going to say he'd gladly have sex uh, with with uh, whoever with his boss to move forward in his career. But he's picturing some chick uh, off the set of a- Ally McBeal. It's like the Sex or, and yeah, the City Girls. De- yeah. Demi Moore with the uh, glasses and the hair in the bun and the sh- smart business suit and the uh, heels. <laughs> and you know, they're not picturing uh, some guy named Roscoe with a big ass <laughs> who they got to blow uh, before. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and then the, yeah, I mean, the, I'll tell you, you want to be truthful about this for guys. You say there's a male boss you have to have sex with and then it becomes somewhat somewhat analogous for men yeah. and women yeah because that's an extra bonus you get a promotion and you get to bang somebody fantastic sign me bring up. it on bring it on so uh but but so men say they would do this and women but here's the hypothetical i've always wanted to ask and and forget about these surveys start asking bizarre hypotheticals you know <sighs> Who, you know, who would you have sex with, like Stalin or Hitler? You know, bizarre, morbid, hypothetical questions, because that's well, entertaining. In- interesting enough, yes. uh, one of the things that, that uh, Lisa and the extra crew is going to allow me to do is to go out into interesting places and just take a mic and ask questions of people in interesting places about their lives and relationships. Huel Hauser's going to make fun of you in a year. Oh, oh. No, but, oh. yeah, but, but I could be, be asking. You'll be at the Laurie Seasoning Plant in Listen, uh, Glendale interviewing may, one of the guys with the hair nets on. I may be what? asking them. <laughs> I may be asking him though, would he have sex with Hitler or with the uh, uh, Ava, Braun. Uh, Ava Braun? Ava uh, Braun. Ava <laughs> Braun. All right, listen. Here's no, Drew. Drew is asking the the direct questions. I know. You know he is. I'm really looking forward to that. That is going to be a very interesting segment. No, I've said this about Drew. He does. He asks the hard questions that other people won't ask and don't care about. I've said that many times. But here's here's the hypothetical I've always want wanted as somebody to ask. And I'll ask you, Lisa. Right. I know the answer you're going to give me, but please, well, maybe you don't. Please let me talk you into the answer. Right, I as want. long as there's no cranberry sauce involved. <laughs> no, but I may swing by on on Thursday. No, you're very invited, and I'll be good and loaded by that time too. So the <laughs> party's really going to start. Coffee. Here's the hypothetical, and and it's tough for you because you work in a sort of environment, but and you're sort of the uh, big cheese over there. But close your eyes for a moment. Obviously, I don't want you to mention him over the air, but close your eyes if you would. Okay. I'm gonna feel her up. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> no, close your eyes. Yes. And picture. I'm so. Mm. Pic- shush up, Drew. Picture. The, I think it's get. I think it's. It, I need to go. Picture. Picture right after this hypothetical. Picture okay. the most unattractive man you work with. Why am I doing this? This is part of my hypothetical. Okay. Yeah. Got you it. got him. Got I don't it. care if the guy's a grip. Got it, it. It could be a PA, a producer, a makeup guy, whoever. Just you got. There's always mm-hmm. one of these guys floating around your work. Everyone. Right. Especially anytime you work somewhere with more than five people, there's one really unattractive guy that grosses out every woman in the office. And it's like his name is Russ, and he's in sales. And every once in a while, when you guys are having a few margaritas My after eyes are still work, close. keep them close. <laughs> they go, yeah. Well, you'll have to make out with Russ for five minutes. And that girl's going, oh, look at the heebie-jeebies. Okay, so you've got that guy pictured. Yes, he's in mind. He's in Mm -hmm. mind. Okay, Mm -hmm. now, here's the hypothetical. Go. You either have sex with this man. We'll call him Russ. Mm -hmm. It's just a quickie. It's just a one-night thing. It's not a big date. It's not a courtship. No one has to see us. Straight sex. Nobody sees you and nobody knows. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, as a matter of fact, when you're done, Russ doesn't even know. Oh, he knows it during that time. But when you're done, he zips his pants up. He doesn't know. And nobody knows. You know, nobody else knows. At okay. Or, or you do not have sex with Russ, but everybody in that office at Extra, everyone from the catering guy to the headline producer knows you had sex with Russ, just knows it, even including Russ. And there's even no, even though you didn't. 
and there's no oh. way you're going to talk anybody out of it. I mean, they know oh. it. Oh. They know it oh. like you know your son's name. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Oh. And, and by the way, this is the crap that I'm sitting around <laughs> thinking about all day. Okay. This is a great hypothetical. It, it, it really Which is. Which would you rather? Yeah, which would you rather? Now, most guys would say, oh, screw it. I'll just have a couple of beers and do her. Right. Get it over with. I don't want to deal with it. And most women, it, for, the first time around, they go, I don't care. My virtue and my pride is worth more than anything. Let people say what they want. Let them think what they want. I know the truth. But it's nonsense because I say to them, you're going to show up Monday morning and, and everybody's every person in that every time that PA who hands you the coffee is going to be thinking about Russ. They're all going to picture big, disgusting Russ on you. And eventually, if I have enough time, I can work them and whittle them down to them going, how long do I have to have sex with Russ? And I go, just 10 minutes, just long enough for Russ to finish up. Oh, and they go, point. okay, fine. So what do you think? No. Uh, Come on, no, baby. No. Everybody. Everyone. No. John Tesh swings by the set. He's high-fiving Russ. Nope. Mm -mm. Everyone at that set. Uh -uh. Dr. Drew's no. giving Russ a little elbow. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. Russ, Russ, uh, Russ wants a little penicillin from Dr. Drew. He's not uh -uh. sure. He didn't wear a condom. Uh, no. Evolution. Come on. In no. High school. No. Come on, I no. Everybody at that show knows. They're all talking. They're laughing behind you. Oh, then the Christmas party rolls around. Oh, and, oh, and, and we're people, right there now. And people are drinking. They're drinking. And it starts and they're to coming get around. Up, and the kids are there, and the husband is there, and people are talking, and they know it. But the hypothetical Come doesn't work. Come on, you get work. it over with. If Russ is so disgusting, the yes. hypothetical doesn't work because people would never oh, assume that you'd be with them, right? They, but they know it. They know it. They know it like you know your son's name. They think you name. just got drunk and you just they messed don't, up. They just know it. What would happen? It's, it's with this is the beauty it's of a hypothetical. It's the they don't it's wait. It's, it's, it's even more disconcerting. <laughs> it's like Lisa. I thought she was. She, I thought she was a, a family woman. I, I can't believe that. Oh, and he's so disgusting. What is she thinking? But they know it. No. Yeah, you get no. it over with. No. Get it over with. No. One quick night. Come no. on. No, uh-uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you would so. No. But I you can tell liar. you, this, whoever I know named Russ now doesn't have a prayer. <laughs> Russ is always going to be that guy with the hairy back now. All right. Oh, all right. Well, I bet I could bet she'd do it. I don't yeah. have any hair on my back. Please. Uh, Drew's like I a burn back. victim. He's like he's like a prepudescent burn victim. <laughs> Yeah, but how about your backside? Yeah. All right. So listen, it's, it's, like the it's the winter. All right. We'll take ourselves a little break. I'm, uh, I, I want to say bye to Lisa. Yeah, okay. Hi, Drew. Go. Lisa. Travel safely. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do it. Thanks for coming up. All right. And uh, we'll be back. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. Hey, Love Line. I'm Adam Parola. He is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Flying Solo tonight. Kara Top has hey. just uh, entered the studio. Sorry, I'm late. Good to see you. <laughs> was, he was, was telling trying. us a, a Jay Leno story. So. Right, but I'm there. with Jay, and, and he said, "I said do my with my set." And they always, uh, as clockwork, hey, good, good stuff. And can't stop. I'm when like, you go back over, yeah, you go over and like, hey, set, good, right? good, good set, can't stop. And I said, uh, "Hey, after the show, come check out my new car." He loves cars and bikes. And I right. said, "Of course, I don't own a bike. I own Harley boots. That's the only thing I own Harley." So they come check out my car. He's like, "Oh, what you get?" I'm like, "That's ah, a fag car." He's like, "No, what kind of car?" I'm like, "Well, oh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's because you know, he likes these muscle cars, you know." I'm like, ah, it's a, you know, BMW or whatever. He's like, BMW? What kind of BMW? I'm like, well, it's the X5. It's like an SUV. Right. It's like, a, it's a, you know, yeah. in his eyes, it's a fag car. Well, but it's, a, it's, it's for, a cool car. To I mean, be fair, it's for, it's for huskier fags. But it's, it's, a, it's a huskier one. fags, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's got a 4.4, like, you know, it's a monster engine. I mean, this thing's faster right. than, than I'm, you know. So I said, come out and check out this car. And he says, um, why can't I got to go to Vegas and do a show at the Venetian? So my buddy and I are like, Venetian? I said, it's got to be like a hundred grand or more. I mean, Jay Leno's going to his private party. Right. After doing the Tonight Show, after putting it with me and then go do that and then come back. 
Right. For a hundred grand. We're just talking about Vegas off the air. What, thinking, how much was it? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It oh. may, may have been even more than a hundred grand, but we were talking yeah. about money in the way. I, I was on the, I was on the freeway listening to you say, we got to talk about carrot top about the kind of money's pulling in. And I'm thinking, I'm not pulling in Leno cash. I mean, you know, no, but I'm pulling in carrot cash. I mean, but, carrot cash and Leno cash is a whole big deal. I got props, man. You know what's going to be? Here's that boot with a kickstand on it. You're like, yeah, there's a hundred grand. No, it didn't happen that way. Carrot uh-huh. cash is redeemable at the buffet at Circus <laughs> Circus, right, by right. the way. Right. And, and, <laughs> but speaking of, all right, so you're in Vegas, you're in Vegas, what, 10 days at a time, a week at a time? Yeah, usually two weeks, which is a week longer than you want to be there. I mean, Vegas is nuts. I don't gamble, so I have nothing to do except drugs. Drive. Drugs, and, exactly. And, 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 it keeps uh, me tra- going, baby. Transvestites. And, and so crack whores. You, you Come go, on, baby. I was being polite and calling them transvestites. <laughs> and you, I'm going to say crack whores. Do you play, you do two shows, two shows a night? Yeah, usually? no one one show a night until Saturday. Do two shows a night. So what? Give me the Vegas schedule. One show a night uh, yeah. all, during the week. Two yeah. shows on Saturday. You get Sunday off. You get no, off. I work every night. I don't have a dark night. I go every night. And uh, for two weeks, three weeks. Sometimes I went for a month. I went for a month straight, no dark nights. Which is, oh. but you know what? For comics, it's like I don't. I mean, I'm having fun. I'm in town. I'm having a good time. It's like for right. me, entertaining is my whole life. When I'm not. I'm miserable. I mean, I love being I remember you guys having this conversation See, last time you were here. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. in fact, my favorite part of ever doing Love Lines ever in the history of with you, I was telling the guys in here, I said, when you said, I have to agree with Carrot Top on this, it just sounded so funny <laughs> that a doctor would say, I got to take the uh, agree with Carrot Top in this story. <laughs> True. Yeah. Entertainment is his life where it's boring is your no, life. It's boring right. is my life. Be- being boring. To be no, clear about this, being more yes. and and not working is yours. So thereby, you see, Carrot Top likes working. How dare you? I, this is no. the see, I do. I love working. Yeah. When I don't work, I feel I feel like I'm not doing. I know. Yeah, it's weird. But I know Adam considers that. Sick. I consider that flawed. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Sure, that's, that's different. See, we have different. Me. We have a different life. You know, you probably you're a good looking guy. I'm, I look like Chelsea Clinton. I mean, so oh, a different how thing. dare you? Okay. And you have congenital cataracts. Right. Car- yes. Carrot. <laughs> carrot is a very attractive man. Carrot, you get sure. You get you dangle that carrot in front of a woman or two, don't? You? I try. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I try to. Do you, do you but have, it's always the carrots of them. You're like, hey, you're like, are you carrot con? It's like, you know, it's not like, yeah, but you what, don't want to be in the heat of passion. Some of your girl yelling, oh, carrot. No, call me, you know, call me carrot. I mean, like, what do you, like, it's not like, it's not the most. I mean, honestly, come on, you're a uh, doctor in second. Imagine me in bed on top of some woman going at it. It's not, it's not I, the I, most. I got, I got to agree with carrot top on right, this one. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, see? Go back to that. Yeah. Orange that pubes. Sound cue of me going. Yes. Oh, orange, orange pubic hair. Ow. Yeah. Carrot, Ow. Orange, yeah. orange in the pube region. No, I've I've had it all removed. I put in tile. It's all. Oh, it's a beautiful. It's a nice. beautiful, beautiful thing. I'm gonna be. Uh, well, you think about that with a woman. I like, honestly, if you go yeah. down a woman. Can yeah. I say that? Yeah. You get a woman. And and you don't want to be like Don King in the leg lock. You know, you want to be right. like, you want to look attractive. So right. with a guy, when a woman goes down, a guy, the same thing. I always think, you know, they wanted the same thing. They don't want to go down and be like, there's yeah. a jungle. That's why he has no. a and it dies his hair. I'm with you. I, so. was, I was talking to a stripper just Saturday night in Vegas over, yeah. <laughs> over at the Olympic Garden. And she said, right. I, you know. They don't validate parking, by the way. It's, it's great when you talk to uh, strippers, by the way, about what they look for in a man. <laughs> because it's like. He's got to shave his balls. <laughs> it was like the first thing out of her mouth. Really? Yeah. And I was thinking, and you get a little wait, insecure. Wait, Car- Top's taking notes here. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, really. Shave balls. Go they, ahead. They get you on the ropes. They're like, you shave your balls. I was like, oh, <laughs> of course. I, uh, on the way in. Right, what are we right, talking about? right. Who does it? Hello. That's why I fly first class. Right. <laughs> the room to shave my balls. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Yeah, shave your balls, right? Of we all, of course, we right. Yeah, right? Carrot Top is mature. Even the women that I know shave their balls. Since last, you have to. Carrot Top I, was such a young young lad when he was last year. He seems so mature now. I yeah. know, right? Yeah, I've matured so much. Yeah, I've, I've I've actually for over eight years or more we've been. Right? right, we've been apart. Yeah, well, your kids weren't even born. We're talking about being old. Oh, eight my years. God. No, you were here. I once. knew before you had your kids. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yes. That. Yeah. I, uh, With another guy, I'm not going to mention the name, but yeah, it was always fun. <laughs> Nicole? No, Nicole. He treated you well, too, huh? <laughs> Always. Nicole, you're 19. Yes. <laughs> what is up? Oh, uh, by the way, yeah, I'll give some uh, dates where you can find uh, Carrot Top. Oh, God. Up, uh, Just look up. <laughs> by the way, the next uh, few. Well, I have this, uh, I have two years worth of itinerary here. I'll just give the first year. Oh, my lordy. Back. They do have a lot of dates there. Nicole? Yes. What is up? Um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um. Every time I have sex with my boyfriend, I I excessively queef, and my boyfriend says it turns him off, and I don't know why it happens a lot. He's quite a gentleman, that man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, he just recently said it. We've been going out for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you sure he said anything else going on? Maybe he's looking for an excuse to 
understand why his performance hasn't been what it should be or something. No, but you know how relationships, relationships are. The stuff that was cute is now disgusting two years into it. It just returned to its real yeah, state. True. Right, it's what it it's, should have been at the beginning. Yeah, it moved out of its idealized state back to reality. Right. Yeah, it goes yeah. from, oh, she, she farted in the middle of the night. It was so funny. It goes from that to, honey, if you're going to, number two, shut the goddamn door. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm trying to eat. <laughs> okay, I, I just want to know if this is normal for it to happen mm, a lot. It's normal for some people, and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Yeah, but I, I, I do enjoy that. I like when they squeeze see? right in my face. I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't is like I... it because it suggests there's too much air around my penis. You, see, you know what I mean? There's, there's room for else than your penis. Yeah, like it's air. like, yeah, it's like, why don't we have a tighter fit here? The piston is the, not the big enough for the right. cylinder. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got a lawnmower piston going in a big block Chevy. There's air. Right. So there's nothing wrong with it happening no, a lot. No, no, Is there no, anything no. I can do so it doesn't uh, happen now? Work on positions. Sometimes their positions are Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Their yeah, positions will do it absolutely. more. Absolutely. And those that will. Right. So I'll it, tell you one, that one of my favorite positions, which is where I lie on the uh, prey, as I like to call them, and uh, just basically pretend to fall asleep while I'm having a sex. There's no queefing in that position. It's the doggy. It's the you on top hopping around. It's all the exotic Kama Sutra type high energy ones. The faster you do it, it's like, okay, put it this way. Everyone, put your hand under your arm. You put your arm in your pit, right? <laughs> now, you make that fart sound when you do this, right? But let's say you move like a, like a tree sloth. Yeah. You move your elbow up and down very slowly. Doesn't what do you get? Not nothing. nothing. You start flapping away like a maniac. What do you get? Thanks, yeah. but the, um, only, the only thing is, I, I get nervous every time I'm going to have sex because I feel like I'm going to turn well, off. Here's another thing you do, too, is that this is an issue of uh, flow, you know, flow dynamics. And so it might help even like to contract your abdominal muscles. It increases pressure there and might, you know, the same thing. I get thing, nervous before I have sex, too, because they're going to call their parents. <laughs> you right. Know? Yeah. Seriously. Don't call your mom. No, seriously, I should. No, I'm only 13. Crap. Unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so is it more him or is it... It's more him. Because people tell me it's the pressure. All right, that, listen. Yeah. It's about Nicole, him. Nicole, you get a, get a position that's not as queef-friendly. Queef-friendly. And uh, yeah, so ugly. tell him to slow down a little. <laughs> Something Queef not QF. Queef-horrific. <laughs> and uh, turn up the stereo. Yeah, jam, yeah, jam yeah. some music roll out. Oh, that's that's good. Find a new position that's called intimacy. Yeah, yes. Find intimacy. Yes, right. find intimacy. Oh, Thank you. <clears throat> Who said and, that? Uh, yeah, you genius. Go. Yeah, okay. Oops. Oops. Didn't mean to Boring, do that. but genius. There you go, Quinn. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. you're thirteen. Yeah, you guys are funny as hell. Thanks, there, Quinn. Yeah, uh, I want to know what the uh, long term effects are of my mom smoking weed when she was pregnant with me. We don't really know. Do you have any problems that you're aware of? Are you hungry right now? Uh, no. Did you have any any problems? He, scholastically? he ate his placenta when he came. <laughs> <You're right>. Any <laughs> problems at school? <laughs> Has anyone got like a Ritz or anything? Come on. <laughs> got a whole bowl of placenta here. <laughs> he ate his placenta. Pl placenta. Pl oh. He ate his placenta. Yeah. Quinn, yeah. any problems in school? Uh, no. Any problems emotionally? Uh, no. No, you're so fine. you're fine. Don't All worry. Right. All right, you guys are funny as hell. Right. Thanks. Today, did your mom quit smoking weed at a certain point? Uh, no, she still does it. Yeah, okay. th that, that may have more effect on you actually than the exposure during pregnancy. Okay. Having a mom that's an addict, the mom's unavailable, that's uh, regulating her emotional world with drugs. How do you, how do you know that uh, she was smoking weed while she was pregnant? Did she tell you that? Uh, my dad told me. Nice. That's great. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Is your mom single? Because I'm looking to score. Everyone's got those like, you know, listen, parents, don't tell your kids everything. You know, I remember when I, I said, you, you know what I mean? Because it sticks in their head and they freak out about it. And they can't put it That's in the context. They don't need to know 13. everything. It's just what kids need to know. No, I, I remember I remember like when I said to my dad when when I was like uh, 11 years old, I want to play pro football. That's the only thing I want to do. I thought, you know, geez, the, the only, the only it, that or no, astronaut. that's the only thing I want to do. Oh, you got over the pro astronaut football. Thing. Got over the astronaut. The pro football. And so the I said, I said, dad, I'm 11 years old. I'll never forget it. We're in Santa Monica driving at the VW Bug he had. Which is not quite a car, by Squareback. The way. And I said, no, mom drove oh, the squareback. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. 2VW family. And by the way, <clears throat> all you, uh, I'm old school. I remember when VW meant piece of ass. There was no <laughs> right. Passat yeah, or right. Scirocco right, right, or anything. Right, it was right. piece of ass. <laughs> VW was a car uh, Hitler decided he was going to crank out right. for the for the drones. Volks the people. Volkswagen. The, the, right, right. This was a pile of ass that uh, people got killed in. But I was driving that car with them, and I, I said, Dad... You think I'll make it to six foot? And he looked at me and he went, 
I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, he's like 5'9", and my mom's not that tall. Don't look like you're going to make it. And I thought, thanks, Dad, I'm 11. That's great. Yeah, so you pull over so I can kill myself. Or just Oh, well, just wait to crash. I'll go flying out because there's no seatbelts. <laughs> i got a, uh, a rag top and uh, a seat that doesn't latch back. Remember those? Just a uh, flap oh, in the yeah. wind seat. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk to uh, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Aaron? Hey. Yeah. Hi, I had uh, two questions. Oh, Jesus Christ. Quickly, Aaron, go. Right. Right, first, Carrot Top, I just want to know what your real name is. Because uh, usually when people who are saying famous or famous have uh, secondary names or names they use in yeah. films. Moisha Wittenberg. Well, Cinnamon's my, Cinnamon's, <laughs> Cinnamon is my dancing name. But I go by Scott. Yeah, that's my real name. Scott. It's kind of boring now. You're like, oh, crap, really? Yeah, you have an interesting Scott last name. And yeah, Thompson, which is like, this kid's in the hall, Scott Thompson. So right. I'm always like, I'm the straight one. You know, so that's the only thing I, I can differ from. And Aaron, what's right. your yeah, thing? Even that's getting a little blurry. Yeah, because I'm wearing a glitter belt. <laughs> we got to go to break. I came with a belt with glitter on it. So, yeah, it's kind of kind of hard. Aaron, what's the other thing? And uh, the second one, I've been watching The Man Show for a while. Fantastic. Right on. Yeah, the Man Show. Yeah. And I stopped watching, and I started watching again, and The Fox was gone. Oh, right. Whatever happened to The Fox? He's in Beer Chug in Heaven. He died? Yes. He did? Yes. When did that happen? Uh, eight, eight, uh, months, eight months ago? About eight months ago, yeah. yeah. Why haven't I been on the man show? I've been a fan of this show for years. The word man is right in the Oh, title, you Karen. son of a bitch. And, and I've got pro I, uh, props are very visual. Television, visual. He won't let me on the man show either. Really? Say, right? Damn it. Uh, I've seen you on the man show. What are you talking about? But I'd, I'd love to be on. Aaron? Yeah? Uh, he died. I think he had prostate cancer. Oh, God. Well, it's very sad. I didn't know. What's that? Have, like kidney failure or anything? <laughs> no. It was liver not, it wasn't was, doing great. Was not alcohol related. No. no. So don't any of you kids stop drinking on the count of the fox's death. He wouldn't have wanted it that way. <laughs> All right? All right, thanks. All right, he'll be missed. We'll take a little break, and uh, we'll talk to more of you after this. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Everlast is our guest tonight. It's going to be at the House of Blues tomorrow night. Just uh, telling the boys about model airplanes. Model jets. <laughs> model jet jets. airplanes. They couldn't have been more excited. They really couldn't have been. I can't believe that's how much that engine costs. Oh, man. my God. God. Boring. I <laughs> know. <laughs> chicks. Wait the chicks. You know, it's funny, too. So I fly these model airplanes, and everyone makes fun of me for doing it. At least everyone I know. The guys at the field, well, they don't make fun of me, but they're a bunch of guys in their 50s that still live at home. Play Dungeon the Dragon. And play and Dungeon Star the Trek. No, you know what? These guys, the guys who fly the model airplanes are more your gearhead than your tech head guys. They still, you, know, you know the difference? They still watch Star Trek. No, no. Star Trek. D and D, those that's a little. Those are computer guys. You know, strangely, we, we, these guys all have an El Camino in their garage. <laughs> it's up on blocks, oh. and they've been building the engine for the last fifteen years. And the uh. old lady's pissed off. And you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. These are tradesmen guys, drywallers and framers and stuff. They're more. These are like the. This is the mechanical. Tinkerers. Tinkerers. The mechanical version of tech head. The tech head yeah. nerdy guy. Yeah, yeah. The same guy. Uh, but these guys drink, and they get in fights, and they're dirtier, and their wives hate them. Or they they're, live they're, at home. They're fatter. They're fatter, and, and they, they, and, they, and they never, live at home. Never Asian. No. Okay. No Asian. And uh, although you'll get one crazy Asian every once in a while, just one crazy. The last guy I saw it there was Asian, was wearing virtual reality goggles. He had a, he had a camera on the front of his plane, and he was trying to fly his plane in a virtual reality. From, from inside simulator. the cockpit. From inside the <laughs> cockpit while he was standing on the ground. <laughs> my model plane. Oh, my God. And there was a crazy Asian guy who was jamming people's uh, radio signals in like a van parked uh, in the park across the street. That, that uh, It's a long story. But the, the point is, is um, uh, they don't make fun of me. Everyone else does. Thank you, Drew. And then, of course, every time I go by there, I see the plaque of the uh, pilots who've left the hangar for the last time, which is all the guys who have died over the years. 
not in model airplane accidents, just died. I think these guys die earlier. I think their diet's not so good. <laughs> All right, so uh, what were we talking about? Never last song. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to hear that? No. Anderson no, says no. no. All right, let's, let's talk to a caller. Let's and go. then he turned back around. Oh, are you cleaning it up, Anderson? <laughs> yeah, that's what he's doing. All right, he's busy working on it. It's be cleaned up. We're going to uh, sanitize it for your protection, and then we'll uh, we'll play it. Denise? Hey, and Anderson, not only uh, do I want you to take out the swear words, but the rhyming words should go, too. <laughs> even if we're clean, all right? Enough of that rhyming. It's poisoning the kids' minds. Denise is 31. I got the Bakhan like John Mock and the Raw. Then Peach steps up, I'm smocking the hoe. Denise. Yo, you're lucky I like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Denise? Hey guys, what's up? Hey. Well, um, I'm 31. I'm eight months pregnant right now. Mm. Basically, the dad left me for a 19 year old in my fifth month, mm. and I've been letting him come around only because I was allowing him to go to Lamaze with me because I figured I didn't want to take away the birth of his child from him. Wait a minute. But every time I let him come around me, he will literally try to pull my pants down. If I'm doing dishes, he'll get he'll jam himself between the sink get on his knees and try to go down on me. He's constantly trying to get on me. And I don't, I mean, he made his choice with the 19 year old. So I don't see why personally he would want to do that. And my question is for Dr. Drew mostly, how would you, find, I mean, I think he's a sex addict. It's either that or it's just old habit because we are. Well, for no, so no, long. no, wait a minute. Um, I, I think you're confusing what motivates guys like this. Right, he, he does stuff like that because you let him, because you invite him back into your life, because you've been sexual before, and he's an idiot, and he just assumes, well, and we've done this before, so what the hell? How old is he? He's thirty-three. Wow, he's got some pretty big wavos. Yeah, he's an five idiot. months pregnant. He takes off with a nineteen-year-old. Who's the nineteen-year-old? Um, I have no idea. I've never met her or anything, but I mean, I'm having a really hard pregnancy because of it. I'm trying to. I mean, I know in the future I'm going to have to be able to deal with him because he is the father of my child. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but why, why, why not deal with him in a more structured way? Why have him in your house? Why let him yeah. do this to you? I mean, he, he, unless, unless you're sort of ambivalent and you kind of maybe want to get him back into a relationship again. Well, she does. Yeah, that's what I well, think Well, I still love him. I mean, All right. he, sure. so he's, my, taking, he's taking full advantage of that. I mean, we've been best friends since we were 11 years old. Ooh, yeah. not a good thing. Your best friend knocked you up and left you, uh, you know, for a 19-year-old. Yeah, and his excuse was, well, I get along with her better. Nice friend. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, who are your enemies? I, just day before yesterday, I basically cut him off and told him no more Lamaze and, you know, <laughs> talked to my teacher and stuff and my instructor, realizing that I'm going to be extremely vulnerable at that point, and I don't really want him in the room. Yeah. No by, by the way, uh, never has there been more uh, a weaker threat than no more Lamaze for you. Yeah. Hey, from now on Monday nights, you're watching football, buddy. You understand me? You're drinking beer and hanging with your buddies and watching football. No more going to the Y yeah. with me and the other chicks and helping yeah, us breathe. She's not. The guy must have yeah. took that pretty hard. It's like she's having trouble. No sort of more Lamaze. Understanding where he's coming from. Well, he's an idiot. He's a total idiot. All right, but she has kind of low self-esteem, and she's yes. desperate. Uh, yeah, I don't know what desperate is codependent. Well, I mean, she's kind of, I, I see her sort of uh, treading water in uh, some ocean, trying to grab onto something that's floating because, by. Because she's pregnant. I bet if she weren't pregnant, she wouldn't feel quite this way. And I think she genuinely trusted this guy and loved him and uh, wanted to make a family. Now she's completely she let down by She was with the idiot in the first place, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just bug out off, you know, how many, it's just so common for cats to break out on, on, on women. They get pregnant now, man. I mean, I'm getting old or something, but no, it's really, it's, lame. it's really ridiculous oh. and lame. And I just, you know, I would like personally for myself to say any dude who does that is pretty much a punk in my book. Yeah. I mean, uh, by the way, you want to talk about uh, society coming apart at the fabric that's going to do it. This there is it. it is. It's yeah. happening it. right now all around us. That man. is it. Yeah. That's what's going to do it. I had my uh, crazy uh, neighbor came by to pay me a visit. Uh, oh, <gasps> Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. Tell me. I know he's going to be. He says he listens to the show. All right. First off, okay. <laughs> he's one of these dudes who wears a uh, tank top that's cut off. Oh. You know what I mean? So the belly's showing. Yeah. This is a week ago. Should he be? Know, 
no, no. But it, it's 74 degrees, you know, and I'm thinking, how hot, how hot does it have to be for you to cut off your tank top? Oh, boy. You know what I mean? You got to be living on the, the, the surface of the sun. Since when, when have you ever put a tank top on, walked outside and went, Whew, it's a little much. This is that thinking, too. When, I got to cut this baby off. Because it looks good on Arnold Schwarzenegger, it, it looks good on me. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think every day was casual day for him. So, you know, because it was the middle of the week and he was swung by the house to see how the construction was going. And, oh, oh, oh uh, this is the neighbor in this the is new the, neighbor. This is the new neighbor. You get crazy neighbors wherever you go. I know. I think I blame the realtors. Oh, I really mm-hmm. do. And it was one of these things where I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? Ah, you know, his, his, uh, like, uh, his mom was sick. He moved back in to take care of her or whatever. He's walking around this cutoff tank top. And he was telling me, he, yeah, yeah, I got a kid. Jesus Christ. I know he's listening. I'm going to see this guy tomorrow. I got a kid in Atlanta, he says. Hey, he's 13. And I said, yeah, what's, what's going on with your kid? You know, ah, he's my son. Ah, it's been a lot. I haven't been out there in 10 years. Oh, I go, God. well, what, what's the problem? Ah, well, you know, it's, Old lady, uh, booze and Prozac don't mix, he tells me. And uh, he's talking about his crazy ex, right? And I go, hey, wh- what do you think your kid's doing with the booze and the Prozac and the crazy wife? Yeah. You know what I mean? All you guys out there who <clears throat> have some crazy bitch who's, uh, who's abusing, substance, <laughs> abusing substances or, or just too crazy. I mean, I've talked to so many guys who've said, what happened? Oh, man, I got out of that bitch was crazy, man. She is volatile, man. I can't even go around. She's nuts. And the four uh, kids, man, it makes it even worse. Yeah, <laughs> four kids get out. Yeah, that's so she's so crazy and so volatile and so screwed up. And you leave your kids there and never come back? the hell is that? Yeah. I don't know. Totally I just think not. there's this. I, I mean, I sense like among even people I know. This just detachment from that. There's not really no a sense they of don't, like yeah. of that being an actual part of you, yeah. right? And your responsibility is like more than know. that. No sense of how profoundly painful and damaging that is for the kids, or none. Yeah, you know, or maybe it's happened to them, and they've just covered it up yeah. so much that yeah. they won't even look at it. Because to acknowledge that would be to acknowledge their own pain. There you, you go. Know what I'm saying, it's, and, yeah, I think it's a combo of those. You know, yeah. but and it's just is- ridiculous. I mean, I see it so much that it's. I mean, it's like. I mean. Not, yeah, it's just, it blows my mind again. I'm like, I'm just sitting here like, whoa. I know, and it's amazing that these guys are probably more dedicated to whatever football team or basketball team they're following than, than their, their girlfriends. Kid. And their girlfriends, st- I still love him. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I still need him. Right. You know, wh- I mean, won't send you a dime and only comes around when he wants what he wants. And Right. But, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. It's pathetic. Denise? So we're going to finish with yeah. Yes. The guy's an idiot. He really is. I know it's a real hard time for you. Your expectation of him was totally different than the person he turned out to be. Oh, absolutely. All right. You've got to deal with that, and you've got to deal with him in a very li- structured, limit-setting kind of way. Don't allow him to run amok. Don't, allow, don't invite him back into your life except in a very structured way. Okay. Right. He, he will hurt you again. And he'll screw oh, your I kid up, no, too. I have <laughs> That's no for doubt real. about that. Huh? Yeah. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. Okay. Listen, and, and you you have no problem. Wait, you don't have a problem meeting guys, do you? When you're not pregnant? No, no, no. I mean, I, honestly, I wouldn't know. I've been with him for so long. Um, Why and have you been more, clinging to this a hole? I, you know, he's just. It's been. I don't know if he's going through midlife crisis this early or anything, but I've been with him. Stop for so making long. excuses for him. Why have you been clinging to this a hole? I don't know. I'm a type. Of, I've only had two boyfriends my whole life. Why number two? Why? All right. Um, no. Because I, I don't. I don't know. I never really. I was. I never really trust men. Mm-hmm. I guess I was. I used to be a dancer, so mm-hmm. I think that I saw a lot of bad things, and right. I was. You know. I. I How's your dad doing? You talk to your dad. Uh, my dad passed away about five years ago. Did he do anything to you when you were growing up? No. Uh. Uh-uh. My dad was awesome. My dad was great. Really? Mm. You just became a dancer. Uh, yeah, I followed in my sister's footsteps, took the easy way out instead of getting a real job. <laughs> both, <laughs> both, I- both this great man's daughters became dancers. Yeah. Yeah. You think you felt very pro positive about that? No, I mean, why, I. Why I would don't... you do that to your dad that you love so much? I'm sorry. Why? Why would you do that to your dad that you love so much? Well, I was always kind of hard headed and. Uh huh. You sure he was a great guy? Oh, absolutely. Where's mom? Uh, my mom's my best friend. She's around oh. me all the time. She's basically, without her right now, I probably wouldn't be able to get through through this. All right, so my wait mom. a minute. Hold on a second. Your mom's your best friend. Which your, is- your dad's the world's greatest guy. You and your sister both uh, got into the ass-shaking business. And uh, you're pregnant, 31. You're with a, sort of a semi-abusive a-hole of a guy. 
Something ain't matching up here. Now, what is it? What? You, what would? Did, 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 would your dad an alcoholic? Yeah. Aha! Uh-huh. The world's yeah. greatest lush. Yeah. yeah. All right. That that creates some issues for you, Denise, and I suggest you look into it. Oh, I've been going to counseling for years. I All mean, right. before I even got pregnant, I was, I was. How can you really sit there and call your dad the great world's greatest dad? How can you do that? I guess. Um, I, I don't know. I mean. Listen, he, never, he Denise, was never abusive towards me. Or yeah, he was like too that. loaded. He couldn't get off the sofa. <laughs> well, L- listen to me. Listen to all you people out there. As My dad was not an alcoholic. He was not physically abusive. He was, he was there for 20 abusive. years. That's right. I've been beating the crap out of him on this radio show every night for five years now because he missed a handful of Pop Warner football games. I suggest you guys start doing the same with your folks. <laughs> start beating on him. You are an asshole. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, the world's greatest alcoholic dad. Yeah, that's, that's it, it doesn't add up till it adds up, folks. It's just, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. Peel away like an onion. Yeah, you like gotta just dig. You. They, oh, it's perfect. Best friend. So it's great. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, both dancers. What got you into dancing? Well, I followed my sister, and my sister was, uh, you know, well, my brother got into gay porn originally. <laughs> opened up some, opened up some doors for my sister getting into the dancing. You know, trade, nepotism then, in that business. Sure, sure. Yeah. Too, you know, who you blow. All right, we'll take a little break. Back in a minute. Coming up, and Loveline will be right back on the new rock alternative 94.7 NRK. Yeah, so it's going like hunting during your lunch break. <laughs> it works. All right, uh, I want to thank uh, Everlast for coming out here. Eat It Whitey's is the uh, name of the CD. Great CD, great guy. Always good to see Everlast. And uh, always good to be here, man. Yeah, well, you uh, you're local, and whenever you're in town, yeah, come around. Yeah, I might just start dropping in, man. Anytime. We've uh, we've had that threat from many a celebrity, Drew, but they rarely back the it only, up. Only David, Ar- <laughs> only David Arquette. Only David Arquette. When you bash him. I was I was t- talking about how completely insane David Arquette is, apropos to nothing, just as if we'd started talking right now about David Arquette and how, what a nut job he was. <laughs> and that we love him. But we love him, but he's clearly... I know David. He, he, yeah. he is clearly, you know, insane, <laughs> and the courts have have determined him insane. Legally. And, I, and there was a knock on the screen door well, right like here. He's like a fun kind of insane. Oh, he's, we, we love him. Like I a was, no, no. Robert Downey Jr. kind we, of insane. We love saying, you. Know? Not, not crazy thinks he's Napoleon insane. You know, good and good insane. <laughs> yeah. I was talking about this. There was a knock on this door. And the door opened. He was standing in it. And, and yelling. And yelling at me <laughs> on the air. He walked in. He was driving by the studio when he heard me saying he was insane. He, he pulled saying, over and I'm came Elmer in. J. Fudd. I own a mansion in a yacht. Millionaire. I own a mansion in a All right, everybody. Thanks a lot, Everlast. And until next time, Santa Adam for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. When I was 19, I ate about four boiled peyote buttons and stayed up all night but felt no effect. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Dingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.